So for those of you that celebrate Easter with family and friends, typically, well, not always, but you're either hosting or you're going somewhere for Easter. And I personally always like to bring the host or hostess a nice little gift. And this is perfect, a nice little centerpiece that they can actually incorporate into their, you know, Easter table or whatnot. And um, well, it's festive and it's fun and the kids will love it too. Uh, so let's just hop right into it here, jump right into it. Now, before I get started here, um, I do want to show you something that uh, actually started using last Halloween um, for those of you that purchased the oh, the gnarly gnarly manor I think it was um, the little set that the haunted house was on is actually layers of styrofoam that I kind of carved away using this hot wire foam cutter um, now I'm showing it today because there's a piece of um, this hard foam that we're gonna be sticking all the different you know pieces into. And typically what I'll do is I'll cut this with like a craft knife, but it just makes such a huge mess. And I realize that well, I don't have to do that. I've got a hot wire cutter and uh, you plug it in, the wire gets really hot. You don't want to touch it, uh, but it literally slices through the foam like butter. Now with this foam, since it's the hard foam, it does take a little bit longer, the softer foam it goes through it really quickly. Um, but you can see here, it's no mess. And it just went all the way through and then it literally just comes off. So you're not left with a, you know, a huge pile of foam dust and just stuff all over the place. Uh, it cuts it very precisely because uh, the wire is very, very thin. So I'll add a link to this uh, in our go-to tools. Uh, so if you have our app, uh, you'd be able to find it there. I think we're going to incorporate the go-to tools into our website as well. Um, I just want to unplug this so that I don't accidentally burn myself. And then we can get started with the assembly of our little centerpiece here. Okay, so let me make sure I'm in frame. Uh, we're going to start with the actual container. Very simple little piece. Uh, move these eggs out of the way. I just kind of started laying things out. And it's actually something that I recommend you guys do too before you start a project. Just lay everything out. Kind of put the, put the puzzle together before you fully put it together so that it's easier to work on. You can just kind of have a little... Uh, well, a little uh, like assembly line, okay? So each of these four sections is gonna have a little panel, okay? And these are gonna go on flat. We're gonna work on this container flat while we can. So all four of these are the same. So you can pick whichever one you want, doesn't matter which one. And just get your glue on the back. And you'll notice that on this, on these pieces, there are some little markers on the bottom left and right corners to help you ensure that you get it nice and aligned. And also we do have a little band that goes around the top. So this also helps ensure that you leave enough room for that little band and everything stays nice and aligned. But let's just get these going here. And then that way I can kind of hot glue my styrofoam into the, uh, the container here while we work on putting our little sprigs together here. Because we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different sprigs. There's a total of six eggs and three little chicks. Okay, so it'll go quick though. All right, so two more little panels. And I don't know what happened, but the humidity has completely left my studio and this glue, or maybe it's the paper, this glue is just drying so quick right now. Again, use the little markers there on the bottom to help you with your placement. There we go. And one more. There we go. Last one right there. 
There we go. Okay, so you'll notice that I also, I inked the edges of this thing as well, as well as these little panels, just to kind of jazz it up a little bit. And now at this point, we can go ahead and connect these two sections together by using these little tabs here. So let's grab our glue, get our glue on this tab, and then I'll do a fine little line right up to the edge. And with my finger, just spread it out to the very, very edge of that. Wipe off any excess glue that may have hit this surface. And just take the other piece, line it up. Make sure it is nice and lined up at the top and bottom. And there we go. And then we can kind of fold this over onto itself. And oh, by the way, while we're at this point, I may as well mention this. Uh, so we're using the little skewers to attach all these elements to. And normally they come, you know, um, well, like a wood color, it's just wood. I painted all these white. You can paint them whatever color you want. We're going with white. Okay, so now let's go ahead and connect this together, make it all one seamless piece. We can still do that flat as well. Let's grab our glue, apply it to this tab. And just like that. Oh, and while I'm doing this too, well, let me finish this and then I'll show you one other thing too. You can lay that down flat, bring this piece over, and it should just meet up perfectly since we got the other side lined up nice and even and accurate. Press that down, we can fold it over onto the seam here that we just glued down. Just to kind of move it around a little bit. Get it moving, there we go. Okay, and let's close up the bottom first. So we already have one side anchored, it makes life a lot easier. Let's grab our glue, put it on the remaining three tabs like that. And a nice thin little line along the edge. And let's work that glue out to the perimeter. Like so. There we go. All right, so we're gonna fold this over and we're gonna focus on getting this edge aligned with this side. So get that nice and centered. Give it a pull towards you or push this wall in if you need to so that it is perfectly aligned. And then just run your finger along the edges here. Make sure everything's making good contact. It's a pretty small surface area there. So I have a feeling that we're not gonna have any little gaps or anything because we can really apply pressure to the whole thing all at once. Okay, and so far so good. I'm going to flip it over and push down from the inside so that the rest of the surface area on those tabs is making good contact. And I'll check my work. I probably rushed it a little bit, but I think it's going to be okay. Yep, looks good. There we go. And you'll notice these pieces here, well these are just little lips that we're actually going to glue to the inside just to thicken up the upper part of our uh, container here. So what you want to do is just throw a little bit of glue right on the inside of this tab. Maybe get a little bit of glue out to the perimeter. Just You don't have to get the whole thing just as long as it's sitting uh, pretty even. And I can put this down on my surface and push down and use my table as an opposing force here so that we don't end up warping our little container. And we'll do that three more times with the remaining three sides. And then we've got a nice little liner to strengthen the bottom. Put that in there, press down. There we go. And the next one. glue out to the outside, there we go, fold it in onto the inside like so. All right, and one left. All the way 
out to the edge. There we go. And we'll fold that in, press it down. Okay. So that makes it nice and sturdy. And then take your, uh, take your glue and let's throw a little bit of glue inside here around the perimeter, a little bit on the inside. And we have this little square piece here. It should have a little L on it. Maybe not. No, no need. That's our little liner that goes right inside. Cover up the tabs and just kind of reinforce the bottom. Make it two layers thick, plus some tabs there. So, okay, so container is pretty much built. Now we've got, like I mentioned, we've got this little, um, you know, this little band that's gonna go right up at the top here. So grab one of these. I went ahead and folded it. When you fold it, uh, it may want to fold like this. Make sure that you fold it so that they're right sitting right on top of each other, like that, like they're best pals. Okay, and get your glue. Let's start with just one side here. Get your glue on there and then just work some of that glue up towards the top. We want the top of that lip to be nice and seamless and flush. And pick a side, any side. Pop it right on there and use your two fingers here to kind of feel and make sure that this piece, this green piece that I'm putting on is nice and flush with the very top. Okay, and just hold that in place for a moment while it sets. Okay, and then you should see here that this side should meet perfectly on the other end. Give that a few moments to dry. And while it's drying, we can move on over to this side here. Again, try to work some of that glue up to the very top as well and then as well as the bottom. Pretty much try to cover the whole piece. Don't go too crazy, but just enough. And just like I mentioned the first time, use your two pointer fingers to kind of create a little border so that you can push this up and you can feel that the container and this little band are both uh, at the same height here or at the on the same level. So everything looks nice and uniform and even. And there we go. That looks nice. And we just need to repeat that with our other one. So again, when you fold this, make sure it folds on top of itself, not like this. That's not gonna work. You wanna make sure when you fold it that the crease is made and these two are right on top of each other. And I'm gonna grab any side, doesn't matter which side you start on. Grab the glue, get it on this piece kind of doing my little pigtail pattern of applying the glue. Make sure that you're putting this in the right spot. This should meet up nicely with the other piece. Just kind of lay it down so that the corner meets or sits right on top of the corner of uh, the actual box itself or the container. Give it a little nudge. Make sure it's at the right height here. It's flush with the container. And you can see how nicely that meets there. Just press that down, be patient, and we'll finish it off here. I had a little boo-boo right there on the blue, but luckily this piece covers it up, so no harm, no foul. I don't even know what that means. It's funny how many things you say and you really don't know their origins or what they exactly mean, but anyway. And the last section here, again, just making sure that it's nice and flush with the top. And that looks pretty good. Looks really good, actually. Bravo. Okay, so our container is almost done. We do have a little caption that is gonna go in here. And this is our little shadow piece. And we've got little cutouts here. Uh, if you have one, you may suggest using it at this point. I've got my little pick-me-up tool here. I'm gonna use that to kind of hold this while I apply my glue. And on this piece here, there are some markers to help you with the positioning of this little caption. Okay, so I'm just doing little dots throughout it. I'm not gonna to try to attempt to cover every single inch of this little caption with glue because it's not necessary. It's a very thin, light piece it just needs just the right amount of glue, but not too much. That looks good. And you wanna use the little cutouts here to help you with the positioning of your caption. 
And pardon my head for a second. There we go. Got that. Let's grab our little Y and get our glue on our happy little Y. Uh oh. No, no, no. What are you doing? Pick me up. There we go. And just using the little guides here, we're going to pop this into place. I feel like I'm doing surgery right now. There we go. Okay, and then, of course, the second part, Easter. Of course, you could, uh, you know, you don't, you can use this container for other things too. If you don't celebrate Easter, it could be a spring basket. Just omit the caption, add your own, or whatever you want to do. Everything that we make is very customizable. If you take the time to just kind of decide what you want to do, pardon my head here. Uh, again, there are some guides here to help you with the positioning of all of these little captions. And once you get it aligned next to the guides, you'll, you'll see how they kind of fall into place and how they connect or interact with the little guides. It's, uh, a little hard to explain, but you'll get it. And there we go. That's pretty good. I'll take it. Okay. All right. So there's my happy Easter. And we're going to grab my foam squares here. Grab my big ones and flip this guy over. And apply my foam squares. I think probably four will work. Could probably get away with just three, but we'll make sure it ain't going nowhere. And then uh, all you need to do is just pick a, I think, you know what? Let me double check real quick. I don't know if there's markers on any of these sides to help you with the placement. I will double check. I don't think there is. No. Okay. Well, anyway. Um, you just want to center it on one of these sides. It doesn't matter. Maybe pick your favorite side, the one that looks the best, to make that your front. And just do your best to get that nice and centered. Uh huh. Looks good. So, container's done. And again, uh, the little foam block here, I cut this at about three inches high, three inches wide, and three inches deep. And then I kind of just um, you know, kind of carved it inward towards the bottom because of the slant of, of this thing. If it's completely square, it won't go in. So you want to give it a little bit of a slant towards the bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and hot glue this, and then we can start working on our little sprigs. So you want to put some hot glue on the bottom of this, pop it in there, let that sit and rest for a little bit so it doesn't go anywhere, and uh, we'll go from there. Oh, and also, by the way, I was at Joanne's the other day, and we were looking for, I was looking for some sort of fill to put in here. And I found this. It's, it's, I don't know what it is. It's not your typical, it's not crinkle fill or paper shred or whatnot. Uh, but it looks like Easter grass. It's really cool. So you do want to fill this in with some of this. And this stuff kind of, it's pretty rigid. I'm going to try to kind of maybe throw some of this in between the little gaps that gaps between the actual box and uh, the actual container and the foam just to kind of fill it in and I do want it to kind of be overflowing we want it to be a little bit higher than the box but I'm putting in the first layer here just to kind of create a, a little base for everything I'm trying my best to cover up the foam that looks nice and then I'll probably do another pull on this and maybe flatten it out a little bit and just kind of fill in the corners here I want it to be nice and full looking and then once we have them on there if you want actually it's kind of cute when it uh, you know, kind of just 
hangs over the edges. There's nothing wrong with that. If you want, if that bothers you after you do this, after you get all this stuff in there, you can certainly take a pair of scissors and just kind of cut away any of the, uh, any of the loose ones that are dangling over. I've done that in the past, but I don't think it's a big deal. I think it looks cute either way. Okay. And you could technically, if you wanted to, um, hot glue this to the foam. Obviously not all of it is going to stick, but at least a good portion of it may. And that's better than none of it staying. You can always finesse this a little bit more later on. And we'll take a look at it from different vantage points and make sure it looks okay to you. And fill in any areas that maybe need a little more. And then if there's areas that have too much, we'll just move it a little bit. Okay, there you go. That's cute. Okay, so we're gonna let this rest for a little bit while we put together our sprigs. And that's a simple paper piecing process that should not take too long. And, uh, you know, depending on how much you want to put into it, uh, we actually I already pre-inked all of these. So the inking can take a little bit of time, but it will certainly set it off and make it look really cool. And then of course, if you decide that you're gonna use some bling, rhinestones, pearls, or whatever it may be, that will add some time to it as well. But in the end, it's certainly not a very lengthy um, project. As you see here, we've already got the container. Um, container's done, and that didn't take long at all, maybe 20 minutes at the most. So, all right, let's get started on our little eggs and our chicks. Okay, so we're ready to assemble our little sprigs that are gonna go into our little centerpiece or our little container, I should say. And I'm just gonna go over, uh, well, there's a total of six eggs. There's gonna be one big one in the center. Okay, there's gonna be two small ones to the left and to the right of the big one. Okay, and then there's gonna be two medium-sized ones behind this and slightly above it. And there'll be one more in the center of that. Okay, now these two eggs are pretty much the same size. Okay, so if we take these, lay them on top of each other, you'll notice that they're pretty much the same size. This one has a little bit of a different shape. Obviously, these two are the same size. That one is, well, that's just the one that is the biggest. And for this one here, there are four little tiny pieces that we need to put in there to kind of create this little um, cross hatch sort of looking thing. And then we've got two little chicks two that have legs. Those are gonna be the ones in the back. And then there's one in the front who doesn't have any legs. And um, yeah, so that's it. Now, each egg is made up of the main pattern, uh, a complementary color behind it. And then all of them have, in our case, it's, uh, what color is that? Uh, it's an oatmeal color, okay? I'm not sure what color you're gonna use, but each one has that. That kind of creates a little dimension to each egg, and that's gonna get glued to the back, and it's gonna serve as the bottom piece of bread in our little sandwich, meaning that we're gonna attach the stick to the first two layers behind it, and then that's gonna sandwich the stick, and it's gonna be the, you know, it's, the stick's gonna go like this. That's gonna be the bottom piece of bread in our sandwich. I don't know how else to explain it, so I'm just making sandwiches here. Uh, but anyway, we can start by just putting the eggs together. And let me take a look and see if maybe this one fits a little bit better. Yeah, I, think there, I think this one fits the best. So anyway, uh, we'll start by just getting the top two layers, or yeah, the top two layers together. And then we'll put our stick behind it. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a little assembly line here. So. I'll do the sticks all at once. I'll put the eggs together all at once and just kind of well, have a little assembly line here. So uh, I'm gluing cardstock to glitter. So with this one, I am definitely gonna have to be a little extra patient while everything holds. Okay, so I've got that one in place. I'm gonna press that down, give that an extra push. Okay, so that one's there. And again, 
We're going to put the stick on the back of this and then sandwich it between these two layers. And we're going to have this nice little oatmeal color back here creating sort of a, well, like a 3D sort of illusion. So we'll put that off to the side for now while we work on the next layer here. And we've got our next egg here. Just need to get some glue on it. Let me clean off my nozzle here. So yeah, Easter was, uh, Easter has become more fun ever since I met my girlfriend who has two kids. They're six and eight now. So they really, their grandparents did a really good job of getting them excited for Easter. And uh, they do a lot of the typical kid things for Easter, egg hunts and all that good stuff. And we still do a family dinner, obviously. So this will be a nice little addition. And I'm sure the six-year-old girl will love this little project. Her and I occasionally, actually, I was watching, made her watch Bob Ross the other day because she's quite the little artist. And who knows, she may be, she may end up doing some work for Dreaming Tree someday if she continues showing that artistic side. Uh, but we watch a lot of painting videos on YouTube and came across that and she's really into it. And then I showed her Bob Ross and she's like, eh, I think he kind of bores her a little bit, but I think he'll grow on her. So anyway, so this pattern here is going to go onto the same, sh same shaped and sized egg. Okay. And we'll push that down. And again, uh, this little oatmeal color here, I'm not going to do anything with it yet, but just kind of, keeping everything grouped together for when we add the little sticks. Okay, now this piece here, this large egg, has this little tiny strip, and we do want to put that in place. And I went a little too heavy on the glue there. I don't know what's going on with this bottle now. Hello. Ah, oh, geez. I think there's a piece of gunk in there that wants to come out. Let me just squeeze some of this out. Yeah, there's something in there. We have a giant explosion here in a second. Okay. Anyway, I got to clean that, but this is going to go right on there like this. And there are some little guides on, in my case, the little purple part here. And you just want to line that up with the guides. Let me clean this thing out real quick and then we'll continue on here. All right. So we've got this piece on there. Now we're going to connect this piece or glue this piece to its coordinating solid piece. So get your glue on as much of the surface as you can. Keep it nice and thin. You don't want to overdo it. Don't want to warp it. Don't want that glue to start showing through in the front. And just, I don't know why I inked that. That was pointless. That was a waste of time. Okay, there we go. And just like this one, we've got our little oatmeal color and you can see how that's gonna go on like that. Put that off to the side and continue on here. We've got two more eggs and then three little chicks to put together. So before you go through and, and start gluing all these, just make sure that you've got the right size piece for each of the little patterns on the eggs so that you don't end up gluing the wrong pattern piece to the wrong backing piece. I mean, it's pretty tough to get it wrong, but you never know if it's late or if it's early in the morning and you're crafting and you're not paying attention and you accidentally glue the wrong thing, you're gonna have to recut. So best thing to do is just kind of Lay things out, prepare things, make sure you got it right before you commit and you'll be good to go. Okay, so put that off to the side and we've got one more egg here. Now again, this one is, um, this one has the four little uh, inside pieces that we are gonna have to glue separately. We were gonna make it three layers so that you wouldn't have to do that, but it's not that big a deal. That's maybe an extra minute 
Not that much extra work. And that pesky thing that's blocking my bottle is back. Couldn't find it. Okay, so just lay that right on there. And again, this is glitter. I'm gluing cardstock to glitter, so I really gotta press that and give that a second to set before I move on here. And I'm gonna use my prototype here to help me ensure that I get the right pieces in the right spots here. And it looks like, looks like the bottom one is the smallest. You know, these two are gonna go like that. And then we've got these two, something like that. Let's see here. And there are some little markers on this piece to help you with the positioning of these. So you may want to just kind of pop them in there and see. Pardon my head here for a second. Yeah, that looks good. Let me grab my pick-me-up tool. And we'll use that to help us not make a huge mess here and be more accurate. <laughs> Spoke too soon. Oh, well, that's going to leave a blemish. Maybe not. I'll just rub it off. There we go. Okay. Doing great here, Leo. It's been a long day. Okay, next little section here. Get that in place. Use the little guides there to get that nice and lined up. Okay. We'll grab our next piece. And you know what, with this, since we're going on glitter and white glitter, I'm not overly concerned about putting too much glue on here. Sometimes you need it. There we go. So in essence, what's happening here is uh, here, this section, it's a little bit skinnier than this section. So find the thinner ones and place those here, and then the thicker ones go just above it. Okay, you gonna do your job this time, Mr. Mr. Pick Me Up? You know I rave about you all the time and you're failing me right now. Okay, there we go. That's good enough. <clears throat> okay, and then we have, of course, again, our little oatmeal piece that we're gonna use to connect everything together. Put that off to the side and we can put our little chicks together. So. Each chick has three layers and then there's a beak and we're actually gonna put little googly eyes on them and then draw uh, some eyebrows on them as well. So the first two layers, we're gonna glue together just like we did the eggs. And this last layer is kind of like the oatmeal layer on the egg. And we're gonna use that to kind of sandwich the skewer. Okay, so for now, you can just get this glued onto the backing piece first. Just get started with that. Oh, glue. Okay. And just line it up with that base layer there, the shadow layer, I'll call it. There we go. And as you can see here, uh, this is a, like a yellow glitter. I did hit that with a little bit of orange ink. And then the orange backing, I did hit that with a little bit of orange ink as well. It might be red actually, but either one will work. Um, and then while we're here, uh, if you're using glitter, it may be a little difficult to see, um, but we do have a little marker there to help you with the positioning of the beak. I can see it when I really get my face in there. Um, so you'll have to excuse me while I lay this down and we'll get our beak in place and then you know, probably probably be a good time to also put our googly eyes on. Okay, so there's that. Let me find some googly eyes here. Okay, there they are. They're the same size. These are about, oh, well, let me see here. Do, 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 do. Uh, three eighths of an inch roughly. Okay. So the googly eyes are gonna go 
right, well, we're gonna glue them down. I don't know if your, your googly eyes may or may not have a sticky backing to them. If they do, I still probably wouldn't use them. Um, googly eyes are gonna go just above the beak. And I'm gonna grab the other one and get it glued down real quick so that I can kind of adjust it if necessary. Oh boy, he looks like he's been drinking. There we go. And just kind of scoot those around a little bit until they're nice and symmetrical. Nice and even on his face. And we'll let that, let that dry completely before we move on. There we go. Okay, so one check is done. Uh, minus the little eyebrows. Uh, I'm gonna test out drawing on this glitter before I do it on another piece of glitter that is not part of this chick, just to make sure it looks okay. Um, if you have it on cardstock, I'm sure it's not gonna be a problem, but sometimes with glitter, when you try to draw on it, it doesn't really work out. And again, this is the little backing piece that we're gonna use to sandwich this between the skewer. So I'm not doing anything with that, I'm just putting it off to the side, because again, we're kind of doing this in a um, assembly line sort of fashion. All right, now, same thing here. Only difference is that this one actually has legs. Uh, but we're not really doing anything different to it. Still putting it on just as we did the one with no legs. Okay, so just get that, get your glue on there and lay that right on top where you can obviously see the shadow layer there. There we go, press that down. And I'm gonna grab my pick-me-up tool we get our little beak in place again. Make sure you see where that little marker is for the beak. And it can help to maybe just take this, oh no, oh no, oh no. See, this is why gluing things to glitter, you gotta really be patient. Probably shouldn't have moved that. All right, I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm not gonna touch it. All right, let's find the little cut out there. I see it, pardon my head here. There we go, beautiful. Let's grab some googly eyes and we'll get those glued down. And then we just have one more chick and then comes the fun part of, uh, well, just putting these on skewers and finishing up our project. Not a bad one. Pretty quick, I'd say, for what it is. And we'll bring it down just a tad. Push that down, help that glue make more contact with it. Pardon my head here. And I'm just trying to make sure that he looks decent. That looks nice. Okay, and again, here's the little backing piece. We'll put that off to the side. And just one last little chick. One last little chick. Okay. So at this point, obviously you've done this twice now. If you don't wanna hear me blab, feel free to fast forward or pause me, get this one done, and then you just kind of scrub to the next section where once you see me pick up the, uh, see me pick up the skewers, you know that I'm gonna start working on the next step here. So that's up to you. But for those of you that enjoy listening to me blab, thank you. Thank you for accepting my weirdness and embracing what we do here. All right, so beak, googlies, and then we are on the last leg. Okay, find that little, find that little marker. Yep, uh, yep, there it is, I see it. Pardon my head. And he's a little sideways. Well, yeah, maybe you know what, he's, he might have a little attitude. I like that. There we go. Okay. Where's my googly eyes? There they are. And throw a little glue on there. Pop that eyeball in there. Basically the, the inner part, the center of the eyeball is pretty much, if you were to draw an invisible line from the tip of the top of the beak straight through his head, you kind of want the eyeball basically touching that center line uh, you know, maybe just a tiny little gap between the two. 
It's the tiniest little gap. Oh, that's a funny one. The eyes aren't looking in the same way. How goofy they look. Okay. So again, I'm gluing this to glitter, so it it's nowhere near ready to stick. And it gives me plenty of time to kind of adjust things, but that looks good. And once again, our little backing piece, we'll keep that all together. So we've got two chicks with legs, one chick with no legs, with the backing pieces. We got one, two, three, four, five, six eggs. And we are now ready to kind of finish this off and get all these on skewers. Um, so I'm gonna not worry about the chicks right now because I know that their googly eyes need to set. Here are my, I have nine, I think, three, six, nine skewers. I painted them all white. Okay, and obviously we're gonna cut them at some point. They don't need to be full size, but we'll leave them like this for now. And what I thought we could do just to make life easier is maybe just tape these initially um, instead of trying to glue it so that they stick. Okay, so I would probably bring the stick up about halfway. Just use a little bit of tape, not a lot. We wanna leave as much surface area as we can for the glue, but I think this will just kind of make things easier on us and give us time to kind of adjust things and make sure that everything looks nice and centered. And that doesn't, which is why I thought this would be handy. Okay, that looks good. And of course, when we put the, um, when we put this piece on here, um, obviously, you know, it's not gonna sit completely flush because we do have a stick in there and that's okay, that we expect that. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that like that. Again, assembly line here. So I'm just gonna do all of these and tape these down first before we move on here and start gluing everything. It may help to line these up straight. If you have one of these mats, they're very handy, especially because you can kind of find the center point more easily and more efficiently because you've got this little grid here. And then that way you can just tell right away that that looks nice and nice and straight. Okay, so you get the idea here. Again, um, this is pretty repetitive and monotonous. And if you wanna pause me and move on to the next section, you're more than welcome to do that at this point. And again, I'm just putting tape on these just to kind of get them in their place so that when I go to glue this, I'm not struggling to keep the uh, you know, the egg and the stick in the right spot. It'll just make the whole process a lot more fun since we're not struggling with, you know, making sure that everything is aligned. We'll just grab our glue, glue it down, and we're done. There we go. Okay, you can see how nice and straight that looks. I'm running out of room over here. Grab my next one. You can see I'm really utilizing my, my mat here and this grid to help me get everything nice and centered. Just like that. And you know what, it doesn't really need to, <clears throat> ultimately the actual glue <clears throat> is gonna do this job. The tape is just kind of like a temporary holder for us so that we give the glue plenty of time to do its work. And I'm literally just kind of going halfway up the egg. I don't think you need to go all the way up. It's probably a little overkill. And there we go. Just like that. Keep that together. And I'm scared to... I'm just going to kind of push this with my skewer and see if... It's dry. Looks like it's looks like it's taken hold. We'll see. We'll see what happens here. And hopefully we don't ruin it. We'll see what happens. Okay, we're gonna go about halfway up the chick here. And just press that into place. And did he I think his eyeball moved. Oh yeah, it did. That is not 
That is not dry yet. So I'm gonna wait to do that. Um, and wait, I'm gonna wait to do the chicks, but in the meantime, I guess we can do the eggs, why not? All right, so idea here is that we're gonna put glue around the perimeter of the eggs, okay, and just get those glued down. I wouldn't worry too much about getting glue down at the bottom where the stick's coming out. I, I, don't, I don't see the need to do that because you're just gonna end up creasing it and it's not gonna look good if you do that. So just work the perimeter, kind of stop at the bottom and then also, well, you know what we should have done? Should have put it on here. Let's do that. Put your glue on the actual egg and not on, or the, yeah, put your glue on the backing of the egg no, sorry, the actual egg, not on the backing of the egg. And just do that. And then I don't want to squeeze this too hard because I don't want I don't want the stick to show through in the front. We just want to kind of seal it, almost like you're making a ravioli. Okay, just be patient. Maybe start on one side, let that grip, hold it, and then work the other side. You don't want to push too hard. As long as it's making contact on both sides, that's all we really want to do. Yeah, that stick is in there. Don't want to push too too far in the middle because then you'll get an unsightly little crease in the center. And we're trying to avoid that. And just hold that in place. Give it a second to set. And you know if the bottom isn't really staying very well, I'm not worried about it. It can be a little bit open at the bottom. And there you go. Okay. So as long as the sides are making good contact there and that side's making good contact. The bottom can look like that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. And there you go. Okay, so we've got it. On, and you don't even see the stick really. Okay, because I think on our prototype, you see here, you don't want that. That's what you want to try to avoid. I think it's okay if it's a little bit open at the bottom. No one's gonna see that. And this looks a lot nicer. Okay, so we'll put that off to the side and we'll just kind of continue on. Just remember, um, don't put glue on this. You want to put glue on this piece here. Just work that glue around the perimeter. Don't worry about the inside too much. It's going to hold. You don't need glue in the center. Just like that. Okay. Grab this piece. And remember, you're going to kind of align it to the left because you want that right side to kind of stick out a little bit. Okay. So just make sure it's nice and flush on the left hand side. Give it a little nudge if you need to. And just press that down and then you can kind of press down. And just press down like this maybe. I would maybe use an entire finger on one side or on both sides. Just be patient while it sets. And just don't push too hard in the center so that you can avoid getting that crease in the middle there. Okay, but I think you kind of get the, the idea of what we're accomplishing here. Simply taking these eggs and um, just sandwiching them, sandwiching the skewer between the two layers. And as simple as that. And just be patient, make sure it all sets. I got this side here that did not set. And if maybe I didn't get enough glue on it, I can always go back in and add a little bit using my little technique where I grab a scrap piece of paper and I paint it. I'm not sure that we did that with anything today. Okay, but that looks good. And again, tiny little gap there at the bottom, but if you're looking at it head on, you don't see it and there's no little crease in the front or the back. Okay, so that looks really nice so far. Um, anyway, I'm just gonna continue doing that for basically the rest of the pieces and then we just have to work on our arrangement. So. Let's go ahead and do that and we'll wrap this up. Okay, so finished up all my eggs, same process. Um, didn't wanna bore you, but again, we just put glue on the actual egg and then grabbed the oatmeal color, squashed it on there. Did our best to not create that little center line. I think maybe on one of them, it's a little more visible, but not the end of the world. Um, really no way around it anyway, so. Uh, we're gonna do the same things, or same thing with our little chicks here. And again, this is already glued down. 
And here is the backing piece. So for this, since it's not just a little oval, we do want to make sure that we get as much glue in, well, these special little areas here. His little, uh, I don't remember what that thing's called. I think it's called a, <laughs> I don't even know, a dongle? That ain't it. We'll start by, uh, we'll start by attaching his dongle. And I, I just made that up, I'm sure. And then just work your way around the rest of the perimeter here. This one's gonna have a little bit more resistance since it's a smaller piece. So maybe just hold the larger areas down. And if we need to, I'll show you here how we can paint a little bit of glue in there and then kind of hold those closed um, after we get the bulk of the body kind of in place here. And you know what, honestly, if we just get this main part on here, and even if we have little gaps up there, I don't think it's that bad, um, but I'll show you how to kind of polish it off. So you can see it, if you see it from the front, it looks fine, but if you turn it a little bit, you can see that little gap there. And it's up to you. I mean, it's not necessarily, necessarily unsightly, uh, but if you want, you can certainly just take a little scrap piece of paper and just pop it in between those two layers. Paint a little bit of glue on the underside of one of them and then just press and hold that specific little area in place to close it up and you can see how that, that gap is now gone. And of course you wanna be a little more patient and take your time, allow that glue to set so that it doesn't come pulling away because again, there is some resistance there. And I'll just take my scrap piece and pop it in between these two little sections that are not sitting flush and then I'll just hold that in place until it's all nice and sealed and all together. Okay, so that looks good to me. We'll just go with that. Okay, so there's our little chick. And we just need to do that two more times. Now with this one here, um, this one we are gonna wanna make sure that we glue the uh, little legs down. And this one's ready for a hibachi stick. I remember I was a little concerned about flipping this guy over because those, those googly eyes just needed a few extra moments to really set before I was comfortable uh, moving it around too much. Okay, so that looks good now. And again, what we're gonna do, put some glue on his dongles and I made that up, so if anyone wants to correct me, you can, but don't think I'm trying to use the proper terminology. Okay, and again, make sure you get some glue on his little feet there, because we want to make sure that we glue those together. Okay, so just lay that down nicely, like so, and then let's get his feet in place too. I'm actually going to start down here and just give that a good squeeze. Squeeze his little dongles and then we can work the perimeters here like that. Okay, you just you have to be patient with this because it's, you know, there's a lot of resistance here, especially with this piece because we've got glitter on it. So for me, it's gonna take maybe uh, a few extra seconds than maybe it's taking you since you're not using glitter, you may be. You may be using glitter, so in that case, you want to be extra patient as well. And you can see here how simple it is to just take a little bit of glue, paint it in there in case it just didn't hold the first time. You got a lot of surface area to try to, try to work with all at once, and it's not always going to be possible to get it all in one shot, so don't feel bad if you have to go in and kind of correct things. Not the end of the world. Okay. So just kind of being patient here, letting that set, and there is our chick on a stick. <laughs> okay, we'll do that one more time, just to show you. And then we're pretty much ready to work on our arrangement. Now, um, for our final version, oh, I have to put the stick on first. For our final version, we're going to add some embellishments on the eggs. Um, I will do the arrangement with you. I'm not gonna make you wait while I put 
little rhinestones and pearls on everything, but you're more than welcome to take a look at the final photo of the project on our website and take a look at what other little bits we added to the final project to really make it stand out and pop even more. Uh, can't go wrong with bling. It, will, it never hurts to add a little bit more interest to your projects and, you know, add that little rhinestone or pearl or whatever it is you want to add, uh, you know, kind of hits the light and catches someone's eye and it really makes the piece stand out more. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to pop this on here. I'm going to do the feet first, actually. And get those down. And, you know, it wouldn't hurt to maybe even do this in segments, like do the feet and the little dongle part first. They're probably just feathers. I don't know why I'm being, being weird right now, but okay. And then you can flip it over and push down on the sides. Try to make some good contact with that. Now that I... I'm gonna get some more weirdness coming out here. But what a, uh, what an unfortunate place to have a stick. Maybe that's why he looks so uh, alarmed. Sorry, you're getting a, you're getting a little bit of an unf unfiltered Leo today. Well, no, that's still filtered, but you're getting something, that's for sure. Okay, and I'm just gonna clean this up because again, dang near impossible to try to get this all in one shot here. We got resistance and tension, a lot of surface area. I'm dealing with glitter, so I've got a lot of things, a lot of forces working against me. Just take your time, figure out where and how you can, you know, correct or pretty things up. We're not actually correcting anything. We're just getting the job done by being resourceful here. Okay, I'm gonna throw a little bit more here on the side of his head. That's what he needs, a little glue in the ear. That'll fix his problems. And there we go. Okay, so we'll just hold that down for a moment. And then, like I said, um, the Easter eggs are gonna get some um, pearls and rhinestones of various colors and shapes and sizes. You're welcome to add whatever touch you want to add to make it yours. Um, but you and I are just going to work on the actual um, arrangement here. I'm going to show you how we kind of had it planned out. Start with the back. Well, actually, you know, we're going to start with the front row. And let me see if I have my, got my cutters here. Perfect. I'm a good boy. Nice and organized. Okay. So, starting in the front, this guy doesn't have any legs because he's kind of... Well, maybe he's sitting on an egg, or she. And I'm just gonna cut the stick about here. Probably should have maybe not cut it so short, but anyway, I'm starting in the front here. I'm gonna make, oops, I'm gonna make our way through. And he's basically gonna be sitting on the grass like so. Okay, and just make sure he's kind of going forward a little bit. All right, and we'll take our two smaller eggs. Uh, where are they? Yep, these guys here. Okay, and these guys are gonna go, these guys are gonna go in here. Uh, they're gonna be slightly, maybe like out this way a little bit. Uh, just a little bit higher than our little chick here. So I'm gonna cut this about here. Hopefully I didn't cut it too short. And we're gonna pop this in here, get it through all this grass. Okay, that's pretty good. Mm. Yeah, I think that's good. All right, and we'll cut this one off. Whoa, whoa there, egg. 
And we'll pop this one in. And kind of putting it in at an angle a little bit. And we want these two at roughly the same height. Just keeping everything nice and symmetrical. I'll just take a look at it and see. There we go. That's looking good. All right, our biggest egg now is going to go in the center. We can cut that off about, about there. That's going behind our little chick. And that's going to basically be kind of sitting on the grass as well, where the two smaller ones that we just put in before this one is not. Okay, make sure you have it upright. Okay, let's take a look at that. There we go. And this one kind of maybe needs to go down a little bit more. Ultimately, I think if you look at the photo on the site, you'll get the gist of how we want this arranged. Okay, next we're going to, uh, where's my other eggs here? Okay, so we'll grab this one. Now, essentially what we want this one to do is just kind of be peeking out between these eggs here like that. Okay, so let's cut the stick off a little bit. I wanna leave a little bit more on this because it is gonna be a little bit higher. And we do want it angled. It's just that initial little push that we gotta give it. And we just want it kind of sticking out, peeking out behind the purple and the turquoise one here. I'm gonna give it a little bit more of an angle. That looks about right. Okay. Whoops. I'll grab this guy here. Cut off the stick a little bit. I guess it would help to have the pointy part of the skewer, but what are you gonna do? Okay, so again, nice angle. And this one's gonna be peeking out on this side. Don't like that. You just play with it until you get it. There we go. Kind of like that. Okay. Might want to raise it up a little bit more. Let me get this one up more. Come on, buddy. Okay. Perfect. Where the heck is... Oh, there you are. There you are. All right. So we've got one more egg. And that's going to go right above our purple one, going straight up, no angle. Oh, my goodness. Like weapons. And that is going to be roughly on the same plane as these. Let's pop that in there. Okay. You want that peeking out behind the purple one, nice and centered between these two. Like that. I may need to bring these forward a little bit. And this one's a, a little bit of an angle. But again, um, as I do, as I always do with arrangements, I will kind of set it and forget it, come back with a fresh set of eyes, and then take a look and see if I need to or want to make any adjustments. Okay, so now these two final chicks, you want them kind of peeking out behind these two eggs here and then the other one right about here. Okay, so you're also gonna do that at an angle. Just pop that in there, look at it from the front. And just pop that in there. And he probably needs to go down a little more. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna grab my last one here. And as I mentioned, I'm gonna jazz up these eggs with, uh, with some rhinestones and such. So just take a look at the final photo on the site to see what that's gonna look like once it's all said and done. And of course, you're welcome to add whatever touches you want, but that's pretty much it, I think. There you go. I may need to move this whole thing forward a little bit. Uh, well, you know, it's pretty centered. That doesn't look too bad at all, but that's really it. You can see I've got a nice pile of rhinestones and pearls here that will add to the eggs to bling it out. And that does it for our little peeps bouquet. 
Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please take a moment and hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel. And while you're there, hit that little bell so that you get notifications anytime we release a new product, a new freebie, or any of our uh, wonderful um, tutorials, educational videos, software videos, reviews, things of that nature. Um, and if you make this or anything from our new Easter bundle, I would love to see it. So would the almost 19,000 other dreamers um, that inspire us daily. So head on over to your Facebook, do a search for Dreaming Tree Group, and uh, or you can use the little link here. And uh, like I said, we'd love to see you there and see what you've been up to. So anyway, um, happy almost spring, happy almost Easter. I hope you enjoyed the project and I look forward to crafting with you again.